Hello everyone, this is topic 15 and 16 from exam 4, and topic 15 is Taylor series by substitution. Um, so as you can read the note, um, we can actually avoid the formal definition of the Taylor series um, and use substitution if we could, um, if we are given or we know the, what I'm calling the um, primary or the uh, the primary Taylor series for that given class of function. For example, um, here's e to the 5x, and this is what I mean by the primary function, e to the x, okay, is given to be this infinite sum. And so by substitution, um, basically all we're doing, it's just like functional notation, we're just going to take the 5x, okay, in the e to the 5x, and everywhere in, in the infinite polynomial, okay, we're, we're going to substitute 5x for all the x's. Okay, and then I even gave summation notation here, and would substitute it into that as well. And it does say to express the result using summation notation. So, just replacing all the x's by 5x, we have e to the 5x is equal to, okay, the first term is 1, plus, and then we have x, which is now 5x. If you want, you could say 5x to the first, and then plus x squared, so x again is 5x, but that has to be squared over 2 factorial then plus 5x is a quantity cubed over 3 factorial and that pattern continues and into summation notation as well we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of again x <coughs> is now 5x now is a quantity to the nth over n factorial and then we might want to simplify that um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write this as 5 to the first, x to the first, and then plus 5 squared, x squared over 2 factorial, and plus 5 cubed, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. And gives us a sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And you want to do the same thing with this 5x, exercise the power property, as we just did with these terms, and write this as 5 to the nth times x to the nth over n factorial. Okay, so that would be all there is to it. Now to show you something interesting, in the last lesson uh, that we had, we actually had this example, um, so I'm bringing up this, this page and pushing up here is the notes from last time. Um, we actually went through the formal um, definition for the Taylor series for this exact problem, e to the 5x. And, um, and so we generated derivatives, evaluated them at zero, made our substitutions into the formal definition, and we came up, of course, as you can see here, with um, with the exact same thing in summation notation ultimately phi to the nth x to the nth over n factorial so this is a nice little technique that allows us to avoid some work uh, but if we're told to do it by the formal definition you have to do it by the formal definition but here if we're told to use substitution now the idea is that in this, notice that we're given the primary formula for sine of x, whereas for sine of 3x squared, if you wanted to put parentheses around the 3x squared, that's the argument of the sine of x, that upon substitution is going to replace all the x's in our polynomial and also in our expression for summation notation. So therefore, sine of 3x squared is 
Okay, we have x, which now is 3x squared. I'll put that to the first again. And then minus x, which is 3x squared, but that's cubed over 3 factorial. And then plus x, which again is 3x squared, now to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x, which is again is 3x squared, now to the 7th, over 7 factorial, and that pattern continues into summation notation as well. The sum is n goes from 0 to infinity. We have the alternating factor, negative 1 to the nth. And the denominator, the quantity, 2n plus 1, as a quantity factorial, and in the numerator, we're replacing the x again by 3x squared. And that's now to the 2n plus 1th power. Okay, so then you want to make this look a little bit prettier. So I'm going to say this is 3 to the first x squared minus 3 cubed be x to the sixth multiplying exponents of course over three factorial then plus three to the fifth x to the tenth over five factorial minus three to the seventh x to the fourteenth over seven factorial and so on and then in summation notation Simplifying the powers there as well. Okay, the negative 1 to the nth stays. So does the 2n plus 1 as a quantity factorial. Okay, in the numerator, 3 gets raised to this power. So 3 raised to the 2n plus 1th power. And then x squared gets raised to this power. So that would be x to the... Okay, when you raise a power to a power, you have to multiply the exponents. So, I mean, just to show this literally, not to insult you, but 2 gets multiplied by the whole quantity, 2n plus 1, to give you 4n plus 2. Okay, and you do want to simplify it to that point. Now, notice that the... Um, the patterns, like we didn't have to, when we put it in summation notation, we didn't really have to worry about uh, the patterns of the powers and everything. Um, notice that the factorials didn't change, but notice on the powers on x, it went 2, 6, 10, 14, etc. So, in terms of the patterns, I mean, we did it here in summation notation by just simply manipulating the exponents by our simple exponent rules. But the pattern goes 2, 6, uh, 10, 14, and so on. And just to justify the foo, okay, here's our starting point. We're starting at 2, so that's why we have the plus 2. And then notice the difference here is 4. And that 4 is basically, use the term often skip. Okay, So that's the, the skipping. We're skipping 4 terms for every n value. And that's why we have 4n there. Okay, So interesting to, to verify that. Now the reason I'm, why I'm so, so you might be saying, why, why are you showing this, you know, polynomial representation? Because you get away just, we're going to, um, the final um, summation notation. Well, the reason why I wanted to do it that way is because I want you to make sure you understand what's legal and what's not legal. And this example will illustrate that. First off, this is x cubed times the cosine, and then I took liberty to put parentheses around this just to the 5x to the fourth, just to highlight the fact that it's the cos argument that belongs to the cosine. But making the initial substitution, the x cubed really just hangs out in front for now. And just as we did in the previous examples, 5x to the fourth gets replaced 
for the x in the polynomial representation for cosine of x. So therefore we have 1 minus x squared, but x is now 5x to the fourth, but that gets squared over 2 factorial, and then plus again 5x to the fourth, that's now to the fourth power, over 4 factorial, minus again 5x to the fourth, now to the sixth, over 6 factorial, and so on. And into summation notation, the sum is then goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth. x gets replaced again by 5x to the fourth. Oops, I got one, one thing I want to make note of here. Uh, it gets raised to the 2 nth power, and then all over uh, 2n as a quantity factorial. All right, and one thing I forgot to do was to account for this x cubed. See, here I just substituted in for the um, cosine of 5x to the fourth. So let's put big brackets around this. I really apologize for this, but I promise we'll have a virtual donut party or pizza party. And we'll slide in that x cubed in front of it. That's very important. And therefore, it's going to be in front of this summation process as well. So let me make this a little bit smaller. In terms of the substitutions, we're fine. But I'm going to put the x cubed out in front of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of that. Okay? Right, so that x cubed was very important. Um, to continue, so we've got x cubed cosine of the 5x to the 4th. Okay, again, I've got this big x cubed out in front of the brackets. And now, just like before, we'll rewrite these. We're preserving the powers. We don't want to square the 5. We'll just say 5 squared. Um, we're going to say x to the 8th, though. And then plus 5 to the 4th, x to the 16th, over 4 factorial, and then minus 5 to the 6th, over x to the 24th, over 6 factorial, and so on. Keep in mind there's this x cubed out in front. And that's equal to, again, the x cubed out in front of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. See, because... This summation is basically what the cosine of 5x to the 4th is. But we've got the x cubed out in front of it. So just like before, we're going to say this is 5, um, negative 1 to the nth. And then... 5 to the 2 nth, x to the, okay, we're multiplying exponents, so 8n, and then all over the 2n as a quantity factorial stays. Now, the reason why I wanted to show the concept of polynomial substitution, well, there's a couple reasons to show the idea of the substitution, but then also to illustrate that the next move that we make is actually legitimate. And that is because summations are, what we have is an infinite polynomial as expressed by this. So to reinforce, that's one of the reasons why I wanted an infinite polynomial. So if it is in fact an infinite polynomial and we have this x cubed out in front, we know that it's natural to be allowed to distribute that x cubed to each of these terms. So the question we're answering is, is it legitimate to take this x cubed and to distribute it inside the summation? And the answer is, because of this, yes it is, because it is just an infinite polynomial. 
So therefore, we'll take this step to show that, to finish this off. And we have that it's equal to x cubed minus, and then the 5 squared, this becomes x to the 11th, because we're multiplying common bases. So therefore, we add the exponents, and that's over 2 factorial, and then plus 5 to the 4th, x to the, add 3 to 16, we get 19, over 4 factorial, and then minus 5 to the 6th, x to the, looks like 27th, over 6 factorial, and so on. And then once again, it is legitimate to distribute this x cubed inside the summation. So the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the negative 1 to the nth. And the 2n as a quantity factorial were never affected. Um, the 5 to the 2nth stays. But then we have x to the, and here we're adding the exponents. So 8n plus 3. And then that would be our final answer. And just to show you, again, the concept of the pattern. Not that, you know, we need it because it's done within the context of the um, summation. But in terms of the pattern of the powers on x, it goes 3, 11, 19, 27, and so on. Notice that 3 is the starting point. That's why we have the plus 3 here in the summation. And then it's skipping every value of n. This difference is 8. And that would be what I refer to as the little skip. So for every value of n, it skips by 8. Okay, I think I'll stop right there. I'll make this a short video and we'll come back and do the next section. Uh, topic 16 to finish off this set of topics.